Following the light of the sun, we left the old world. I'm telling you that India is that way, now set my course. The air soft as that of Seville in April, and so fragrant that it was delicious to breathe it. It appeared to me to be a race of people very poor in everything. They go as naked as when their mothers bore them, and so do the women although I did not see more than one young girl. All I saw were youths, none more than thirty years of age. They are very well made, with very handsome bodies and very good countenances. Their hair is short and coarse, almost like the hairs of a horse's tail. They wear the hairs brought down to the eyebrows, except a few locks behind, which they wear long and never cut. They paint themselves black. In the first island which I found, I took some of the natives by force, in order that they might learn and might give me information of whatever there is in these parts. They soon understood us, and we them, either by speech or by signs, and they have been very serviceable. Their houses are all built in the shape of tents, with very high chimneys. They brought us parrots and balls of cotton and spears, and many other things, which they exchanged for the glass beads and hawks bells. They willingly traded everything they owned. They were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They do not bear arms and do not know them. For I showed them a sword. They took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. It is true that after they have been reassured and have lost this fear, they are so artless and so free with all they possess, that no one would believe it without having seen it. Of anything they have, if you ask them for it, they never say no, rather they invite the person to share it, and show as much love as if they were giving their hearts. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fine servants. With fifty men we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Endless testimonies prove the mild and pacific temperament of the natives. But our work was to exasperate, ravage, kill, mangle, and destroy. By prevailing over all obstacles and distractions, one may unfailingly arrive at his chosen goal or destination. Your Highnesses have an other world here, by which our holy faith can be so greatly advanced, and from which such great wealth can be drawn. It is easy to discover what another has discovered before. Nothing that results in human progress is achieved with unanimous consent. Those that are enlightened before the others are condemned to pursue that light in spite of the others. For the execution of the voyage to the Indies, I did not make use of intelligence mathematics, or maps. Riches don't make a man rich. They only make him busier. It was the Lord who put into my mind the fact that it would be possible to sail from here to the Indies. All who heard of my project rejected it with laughter, ridiculing me. 
There is no question that the inspiration was from the Holy Spirit, because he comforted me with rays of marvelous inspiration from the Holy Scriptures. Oh, what a gracious Lord, who desires that people should perform for him those things for which he holds himself responsible, day and night, moment by moment, everyone should express their most devoted gratitude to him. It is hoped that by God's assistance, some of the continents in the ocean will be discovered for the glory of God. Gold is the most precious of all commodities. Gold constitutes treasure, and he who possesses it has all he needs in the world, as also the means of rescuing souls from purgatory and restoring them to the enjoyment of paradise. I am a most noteworthy sinner, but I have cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy, and they have covered me completely. I have found the sweetest consolation since I made it my whole purpose to enjoy His marvelous presence. No one should fear to undertake any task in the name of our Savior, if it is just, and if the intention is purely for His holy service. Thus the eternal God, our Lord, gives victory to those who follow his way over apparent impossibilities. Life has more imagination than we carry in our dreams. I should be judged as a captain who went from Spain to the Indies to conquer a people numerous and warlike, whose manners and religion are very different from ours. who live in sierras and mountains, without fixed settlements, and whereby divine will I have placed under the sovereignty of the King and Queen our Lords, an other world, whereby Spain, which was reckoned poor, is become the richest of countries.